Hi, my name is Jeff Phillips, and today we're going to talk about JBL CBT loudspeakers. Why is it that, it that they do so well? Well, submarines. There's the answer. It's submarines. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is that uh, in naval research and in the, the Navy and naval defense, um, it, there's a lot of transducer research, okay? They do a lot of uh, a lot of testing. A lot of research uh, happens um, to be able to sense what is happening beneath the surface of the uh, of the ocean. And um, when I say uh, toad array, if you think about if you think I'm talking about this, then that's probably not where we're headed. It's more like this. Here's a boat towing a toad array, uh, and it's listening to the uh, to the um, um, what would that be? A right whale, I think it is the profile of, and it's uh, it's got an array of microphones. Uh, if it, this were sonar, then there'd be also a ping, a transducer. Um, uh, uh, suffice it to say that the the whole marine field relies on transducers quite a bit. And uh, in 1978, they uh, declassified the Navy declassified a bunch of research they did on th something called constant beam width transducer. Now, when they say transducer, uh, they're actually talking about an array of transducers in, a, uh, uh, in an arc and how that behaves and how that helps them um, sense accurately what's happening uh, beneath the waves. Don Keel viewed that report because He's Don Keel, and he's one of the foremost uh, transducer um, uh, and loudspeaker system uh, engineers in the world. So he looked at that research and said, hey, I think I can make some interesting loudspeakers out of this. And so here's his prototype. Here's his first prototype of a CBT. Uh, notice the curvilinear array. Notice the uh, all the transducers located in it. Um, and at the time, he was working with JBL and still does research with JBL. Uh, and he got a hold of JBL's Doug Button. Now, I have to point out that Doug is in his uh, padded cell, uh, I mean office, I mean laboratory, uh, surrounded by all the best equipment that you can get for, for testing, for, uh, for research, for simulation. And uh, these two brains got together and, oh my gosh, uh, out came, came something really, really useful. Now, CBT stands for, according to the Navy, constant beam width transducer. Uh, according to JBL, however, they've changed it a little bit and, and trademarked the term constant beam width technology. Now, the reason they went to technology on the end is because this describes uh, technology they're going to use for a whole raft of uh, very useful products. Um, now, the key to the success of CBTs that are, really is two aspects. One is amplitude shading. Um, notice from the little arrows of different lengths coming off that, it implies that the, the transducers in the middle are at a louder level than and progressively quieter level out toward the edges. That's indeed exactly what's happening. There's amplitude shading. There's also um, progressive delay. Now imagine you're standing uh, facing that array, facing uh, the middle uh, transducer in that array. Uh, that one's going to be loudest, right? Uh, and it's also going to be in that that one's going to have a, an earliest arrival time to your ear. Uh, and the rest are going to kind of follow in, in at some delay. Um, and their, their arrival time of their sound comes to your ear uh, just a little bit later. And so that's the uh, progressive delay. And uh, the advantages of having uh, a amplitude shading and the progressive delay is that the, the, uh, the beam width remains much more consistent over frequency. Uh, you could, the graphs speak for themselves. You can see what's going on there. I want to be listening to the speaker on the, the loudspeaker on the right, right? Because I'm going to get a much more consistent experience over frequency than I would just a simple uh, stack up of, uh, of vertical loudspeakers. So uh, the other aspect is that you get a deep, wide, sweet spot uh, in front of these loudspeakers. In fact, there's only a 3 dB drop per doubling of distance. Now you say, wait a minute, uh, I thought there was supposed to be a 6 dB drop in every doubling distance from, well, there is from a point source loudspeaker, not from a CBT. They go further, they go deeper into the, the space and giving you better coverage. 
um, that's useful, especially for this guy, right? He wants to be in the sweet spot, but his sweet spot's pretty narrow. Um, and I, I want to be in the sweet spot. I want to give us nice sweet spot to half the congregation, to half the audience. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, and then maybe there's another one over there covering the other half, right? Of course. Um, I want to make sure everyone's getting a nice experience um, and can hear every word. Um, so practicality comes into it. Uh, JBL created their CBTs in a straight package. Why a straight package? What? Uh, well, what they did was uh, they, uh, using, a, using a passive network, they progressively, out from the center of the array, delayed and, um, and attenuated each pair of speakers as they go out. So you get the effect of a curved array in a much more practical package. Uh, does it get loud? Yes. Oh my, oh my gosh, of course. Uh, it gets up to about 109 dB off this CBT-100 at 16 meters, which is about 52 and a half feet, which is about the depth of your average um, mid-size house of worship. So they went further to be able to um, help you configure this thing to the space uh, by putting a 70 volt transformer into it and also giving you a couple switches um, you, you can uh, there, you can switch the switch between speech and music. Uh, speech gives it a, a kind of a boost in the mid range. Uh, music kind of levels out that that bump, th so it's much more flat and natural sounding for music. Uh, they also give you a switch for wide or narrow. Wide uh, it is uh, talking about uh, a 40, de 40 degree included angle for the coverage, the vertical coverage off of a CBT. Um, and narrow means more like 15 degrees. So 40 or 15, depending on that wide or narrow switch. Uh, and it depends on your situation, right? There's also a pan and tilt bracket that comes with every CBT loudspeaker. Um, optionally, you can get a flying bracket or a flush mount bracket. So you got, uh, you got mounting options. Uh, CBT 50 is 50 centimeters high, 50, uh, CBT uh, 100 is twice that. Uh, so you have white or black, large or small. Back to the color for a second. Uh, these are uh, resin cabinets, so you can paint them. There's a tech note on JBL.com that'll tell you exactly what you're getting into when you, when you paint them and give you best practices for, for painting them. Take a special uh, care when you're painting the grills because you don't want to plug the very fine holes. Uh, so white or black, short or tall, uh, loud, louder, and uh, you guessed it, uh, even loud, <laughs> even louder. Um, you've got the CBT-70. Now, CBT-70 is a little bit different animal. It still uses CBT technology, but it's in a kind of a J shape. That, that bottom part of the array where you see the tweeter ribbon in front is, uh, is, the, uh, is the full range, and then the top is the, the low frequency extension. Um, the ribbon of high frequencies you see uh, there are the same switches for wide and narrow and speech and music, but I got to say that this thing is the musical darling of the family. Uh, it was it was uh, it was really something, and uh, many many gyms, houses of worship, um, meeting rooms, uh, small auditoriums will use the CBT70 usually with this extension uh, to really get some nice sound. Now, a word about the extension. Um, it uh, doubles the power can power handling of the uh, of the array. It also brings the low frequency um, vertical coverage more in line with the highest frequency vertical coverage from the array. So uh, it's a it's a nice thing to have. It can lower the um, uh, the frequency response as well um, by uh, by about a half an octave. Um, do you need more? JBL came out with more. Uh, there's also a thing called the CBT-1000. This is the latest in the CBT series. Uh, as you might imagine, it's a thousand millimeters high or a meter, a meter tall, uh, as is its as extension, the same size. And uh, so you got a two meter tall array. Uh, it is um, louder still. It is it'll develop 130 dB sound pressure level at one meter. And it does that by you know by handling up to 2,000 uh, watts of program. So if you need a lot of output from a loudspeaker, this is a really good choice. Uh, uh, but it doesn't stop there. It has, uh, in addition to the progressive uh, waveguide, I really should explain that. Uh, notice the waveguide that uh, surrounds the ribbon of tweeters uh, is kind of wide at the bottom, 
but then it gets narrower up at the top. And so it's got a differential. It's going to have a further throw for the high frequencies at the top of the array than the low frequencies. Why is that configurable coverage necessary? Uh, because rooms kind of look like this from a standpoint of a loudspeaker. Uh, the room might look like this. And the top of the array needs to produce something that's deep and narrow, where the bottom of the array it, uh, produces something that's wide uh, and not so far. So, uh, so we need to be able to configure that. And keep in mind, these are all passive units, right? So, uh, and rooms are different, so we need some, something to do that. Well, Doug Button and his group came up with a very interesting way of controlling that. In fact, it's the only CBT where you can control the, uh, the spread, uh, the, the high frequency coverage, the vertical coverage of the top of the array separate from the bottom of the array with, by means of these jumpers and the combination of where you put them. Uh, there's also, um, yeah, four, yeah, four settings for the upper half, four settings for the lower half. And then you have another jumper that's music or speech. Same idea as I've mentioned before. Sometimes the rooms you put CBTs in are not even rooms. Uh, look at this. This is a, um, a high school football field uh, with grandstands that, that I covered with three. Uh, one on the press box itself and two on the, uh, the light stanchions. Uh, there are also a couple more facing uh, out onto the field that kind of complete the coverage in those corners. Um, but man, the folks love it. It sounds good. It looks slim. It's, it's, um, uh, it's, it was definitely the way to go for this particular field. Uh, now, of course, I mentioned that these are passive arrays. They're going to need power. So here come the power, uh, the power amplifiers from Crown. In fact, the ones we recommend from Crown, most of them actually have presets in them already for the CBT series, um, including the, the new, uh, my favorite, the CDI series, uh, drive core amplifiers. So um, putting the preset on for, uh, uh, for the CBTs right into the amplifier does two things for you. One, it makes sure you're getting the, uh, the maximum performance out of that loudspeaker. And, uh, and second, it protects the loudspeaker. Both are really good things for you. They're good things for your, or your client. They're good things for everybody. And they're the way to go. So JBL uh, with the crown, yeah. What could be better? Well, how about we put a promotion on? Uh, CBTs are actually on promotion right now. Uh, and that means that you could uh, pair your CBTs with a Crown XTI series amplifier, CDI or DCI series amp. Amp or amplifiers because sometimes it takes more than one, and uh, and you will get a substantial discount. How much? Give us a call. We'll tell you the program details and get you signed up for it. All right. So that's a quick uh, run through of what CBTs are, how they work, how they came to be, uh, why why now is the best time to buy them, and I'll talk to you soon.